the Lord God. Father, we thank you for those that are coming, Lord God, that you bring here safe and soundly, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We give you all the honor for being here, Lord God. Yes. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. I say we thank you in a mighty way, Lord thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, okay. All right, we're going to sing God's got an army. Can we stand to our feet? Praise the Lord. Well. Y'all going to sing this? Y'all going to sing this thing? God's got an army. Not afraid of the cross. Soldiers of the cross. Not afraid of the cross. You gave it your best shot. <laughs> you sure did, brother. Thank God for a willing heart, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise your Father. I'll be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. God's got an army, not afraid to fight. Soldiers of the cross.
17 people. And it was just like this. And you know, I always tell y'all the story how we grew out of that first pillar. But I heard him say something when I was there this past week. He said, we stayed in that little building a year and a half. Huh. Did you know that, Sister Gail? No, I didn't. Did I thought, thought we moved know. out that building quicker than that. Hmm. But God then promoted us in seven months. Amen. Man, don't y'all know God is doing something? Amen. Amen. Really? Y'all need to be rejoicing. I don't think y'all realize what God is doing. Well, Just because people are not standing in line to get in here. Uh, I didn't know the man had waited a year and a half to make the first move, Pam. Uh, God bless us. Well, we made our first move in seven months. Amen. Now, we need to be rejoicing. Yeah. Yeah. God's got an army. Who's army? You are. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time. God's got an army. Not a friend of mine. Soldiers of the cross and we're building another life.
praise. Amen. 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 Where was he from? Huh? Africa? Where was he from? The gentleman that was sitting at the table with us yesterday. India? India? Yeah. A missionary in India. A missionary in India, and he was a... Mission. Tell us, tell us some of the things he shared with you about he, what he was going through over there. Well, he, he, <clears throat> he uh, was a missionary. I mean, he is a missionary to India. They have a church in California, but uh, he goes back and forth to India, and they have kind of like... They minister to the children, and they say if they reach the children, and they reach the adults, and they, he said they live in little villages of like families of 80, 85, and when he first went there, everybody was just laying around in the middle of the day, kicked back, doing nothing. So he asked somebody, well, why isn't anybody doing anything? And he said, because there's no work. And so they told him that when there's no work, there's no food. And they have to go for like three and four days at a time without food. And so um, he went and bought like a, a couple hundred pounds of rice because they eat a lot of rice. And he bought vegetables and um, they asked them why did he do that? What, what made him do that for them? And that was his avenue of uh, sharing the gospel with them. And he said, somebody sent me over here to feed you. And then they wanted to know who. So then he could tell them that Jesus sent him to feed them. And um, um, so he, they sat down and he told them about the gospel for six hours straight. They had nothing else to do, so they just sat there and listened. And then they, they were so blessed and the children were so, he said the children go on the garbage dumps and they, they're looking for just, try to find one little grain of rice to eat and he said maybe at the end of the day with their little hands they might have a hand full of rice that they picked out of the garbage to eat. And he, and he said he was getting ready to leave and they wanted him to know how much they loved him and how much they appreciate him so the children bought him a little sack, paper sack wrapped up in tape with what they call toffee and he said it was like sugar and um, ginger mixed. There was little balls, little crumb balls of sugar and ginger mixed. And um, so the, the guy, that, the man who was had started the mission, um, well, you better let me taste this in case some witch doctor or something, you know, got old to it. So they tasted it and no, it's very good. And so what the man told him was that the children got, uh, gathered up the sugar and the cinnamon they made this toffee just for him. And he kept saying, they gave their all just for you, and they made this toffee. And so he wasn't, the man kept saying that they gave their all just for you. And so he helped him to see that the children went around from house to house in the village. They got their little pennies together. They went around from house to house, and then they uh, bought the sugar and the ginger to make this toffee. And he said that that village probably would not eat for seven days because they took all the money that was in the village to make the toffee to give him, to show uh, him how much they loved him. And so he said that God just hurt his heart, you know, he just got a real burden and he went back to America and he couldn't sleep. He was a businessman. He, he didn't say what kind of business that he owned, but he couldn't sleep. He said he would go in his office and uh, just lay on the floor and cry, cry, cry before the Lord. Lord, what are you doing to me? I'm losing my mind, you know, because he said he, he never was a person that cried. He said, I went over there. You let me go over there. And now I'm losing my mind. I can't get control of myself. He said he couldn't do any of his business, couldn't answer none of his phone calls because his heart was so heavy about uh, what he saw in India. And so the Lord says, I need you to go there and I need you to take care of these uh, children. And so uh, they go there, they try to uh, find homes for the children, but he said they have like 50 babies right now from um, infant to like two or three where the parents don't have any place or food to feed them. So they just drop them off at this mission. And they, they have five women that are taking care of them. But most of the children, they, 
They try to put in homes because he says it's so important that they feel like they're part of somebody. And he said, but uh, God's just blessed them to go over there and they take clothes and they take food and uh, they minister the gospel. Let's make it a fight. Um, one thing that we don't have to worry about fighting, and that's to eat. Amen. We got food to eat. Amen. Those people over there have to fight for survival. Mm -hmm. They got to fight just to have a meal every three days or so. Amen. We're really blessed more than we realize we're blessed. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, and as we all sit around with all of those pastors, all of them had different stories, you know, of things that they've been through and people that they've seen and hardships that they've seen. And, uh, Sister Kelly and I just couldn't wait to get back here just to see uh, the people, you know, that, that are blessed and, and that, that love one another. It was just so sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, we was in that big old church with all those people, and it's just not the same when you're a little family just loving on one another, and everybody know everybody, and everybody touches somebody. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You got so many people that just pass by you, you know, and well, they didn't pass by us because they know us, but you look at some people who just came, and they kind of like off over to the side, nobody touching them or anything. You know, it was really a blessing, you know, to be there, but at the same time, it was a blessing to hurry up and get back. Amen. I couldn't have stayed another week. Amen. <laughs> I couldn't have stayed another day. Tuesday night, fam, after the first meeting, I was ready to come home. Yes. But we, we decided since the tickets cost so much, maybe we better go ahead and stay. <laughs> maybe we better go ahead and stay and get all we can get. But, uh, man, there ain't no place like home. Amen. God, I tell you, I'm so glad to be back in St. Paul, Minnesota. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. If we have any first-time visitors, this is your very first time. You've never, ever been here before. We'd like for you to stand right now so we can make you welcome. We'll give you a word of life. Christian Fellowship, welcome. Can't call nobody out no more. <laughs> order to grow, you gotta change, amen. amen. <laughs> My God, go to him, and he will mold us and mend us and shape us in what he wants us to be. Amen. That's right. Amen. amen.
Isn't that heavy? Yeah. God said that the hearts of the people in this region are very cold towards him. And we don't want that to be said about us, amen? amen? That our hearts are cold. That we don't have no reverence for God. That we don't recognize who God is. That we don't know how to love on God, amen? amen. If you, everybody knows how to say, I love you. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Everybody in here knows how to say those three words. I love you. So we can't say that we don't know how to love on God. Amen. But you know what? If you don't love on God, that's where the coldness of the heart comes. Yes. So we want to just begin, you know, God has sent us here to uh, teach people how to love on him. Amen. And God yes. said that he was going to melt those cold, stony hearts. Yes. Isn't that something? Aren't you excited? Has God touched your heart, Pam? Don't you love him? That's one heart that been melted. Amen. Amen. Does God, God touch your heart, Sister Betsy? Don't you love him? And you know what? He wants us to take that same love and spread that love for him about with others. You know, tell other people that he wants, he loves them. You know, some people don't know that God loves them. They've made a few mistakes in life and they think that God is some ogre up in the sky that's just going to beat them to a pulp. You know, to their squash down to nothing. But God wants a love relationship with everybody in here. Amen. You know, we right here, we're not Christian fellowship. We're going to start the fire. Oh, God. Amen. That was just so awesome. But guess what? We're going to have the same thing right here. You know? We know how to be in the God's presence. We might not today be 2,000, but we know how to lift our hearts up to the Lord. Amen. And love Him. True heart, amen, and true worship, and in true praise, hallelujah. So let's just enter in. You know, there, there's no other God like our God, amen. amen. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. There is no other God like the God that we serve. And amen. we need to recognize that as a privilege. Yes. You know, sometimes I think we take it for granted, God, for granted, you know, and oh, I had a hard night and I was like, God, so I'm just going to stand here a little bit. But no, we need to live the whole being to the most my God and whom we serve. Amen. Amen. So as we sing this song, there is none like you. I want you to sing it from your heart. I want everybody to shut out their neighbor. Yeah. Let's make this personal today. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? That makes a difference when we're making it personal, Gary. You know, Amen. you ain't got to wait on Rick. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. But you can have that personal relationship with God. So as we sing, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart. We're talking about hearts this morning. Amen. Yeah, Getting our hearts right before God. No one else can touch my heart like you do. And if we search from today throughout all eternity, we'll find nobody like the God that Amen. we serve. So let's just lift our hearts and worship him this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We love you, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. Yes, say we love you, Lord God. Oh, we love you, Lord. Say we love you, Lord God.
I desire to pour my spirit out on you without measure. But the Lord desires that you surrender. Surrender everything unto me, saith the Lord. Don't hold anything from me. Submit yourself. Submit yourself totally unto me, saith the Lord. I will pour out my spirit upon you, and you will do things you've never done before. But surrender, surrender, surrender your will, surrender your desires, and I'll give you the desires that you should have, saith the Lord. I will use you in a way you've never been used before, and I will pour out my blessing and my spirit upon you, saith the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Did you receive that? Yes. Hallelujah. Do y'all want God to pour out His Spirit upon you? Y'all don't think Raphael just want to come up here to be seen, uh, that he want to be known as this great man or whatever. But you need to listen to what's being said and take it to heart. It's yes. not going to be effective in your life if you don't take it to heart. Yes. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. You need to listen to what's being said. Whenever a word goes forth, it is scriptural. Listen to it and take it to heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Life-changing message today. Amen. It's simple. Very, very simple. But how many of you know some of the simple messages can be the most powerful messages? Amen. The simple messages are the one that you'll remember and that will stay with you and that will absolutely change your life. Anybody in here want their life changed? Amen. Hallelujah. If you want your life changed, you're in the right place today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bow your head with me while I pray. Father, I come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I know that the message that you have given me will be a life-changing message. Yes, Lord. I know that your people are here to hear, Father, or they wouldn't yes, have came. Lord. And Lord, I ask that as they came to hear, let them hear intelligently, Lord. Yes. Let them understand what thus saith the Lord. Yes. And let them make a quality decision to change, Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. God, I bind the works of the devil. I thank you giving me that authority to do that. And I bind you, Satan. You will not stop anybody from receiving today. I say that the people will be attentive. Their ears will be open. Their understanding will be enlightened. Not one word will fall to the ground in Jesus' name. I thank you and I praise you, Father, that as your word go forth, it will go forth with power and authority and yet with simplicity that the youngest child in here may understand. In the name of Jesus, thank you for your word that it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that which you please. In Jesus' name, praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, God's word is very capable of changing our lives. Amen. But it's what we do with the word when we hear it is what will determine if your life will be changed. Amen. Um, I have so much to share. I have so much to say. I have so much to give out. And I'm praying for wisdom on how to give out what I have. Um, we will see a miraculous change in Word of Life Christian Fellowship over the next six months. Amen. And from that time on, starting today. The men are fired up because the men was at the breakfast yesterday. Amen. Amen. Women, y'all will get a hold to it. I promise you, you will. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Carol brought a little fire back with her too. Amen, Sister Carol. Amen. Glory to God. You know, um, I think, first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for being faithful while we was gone. Amen. I got nothing but good reports, you know, that everybody was faithful and being here and everything. And that means an awful lot to us. When we go out of town and hear good reports. Amen. Most of the time when uh, the heads leave, the whole church goes wild. Amen. Really, Sally Sue starts sleeping with John and John starts sleeping with Bessie Lou and oh all kind of stuff, you know. But I thank God that these people, these people, was faithful, committed to God. Amen. You know your walk is with God and not with us. Amen. We all walk together, but your walk is with God. Amen. Amen. I appreciate y'all uh, being committed while we were gone. I really do. Amen. Amen. Uh, while we was down there, we, we got a chance to meet a lot of different people, uh, different ministers and things. And I really counted it a privilege to be able to come back to such a beautiful flock of people. Amen. A lot of times you get ministers together, they like to brag on how many people they got. <laughs> oh, we got 20,000. 
Oh, we got 2,000. I said, oh, thank God for my 25. <laughs> Pay for 25, hallelujah. I'll tell you what, I'm not ashamed of my 25. Amen. I'll tell you one thing, most of y'all know more words than the preachers that was hollering. Well, yeah. <laughs> most of you do. <laughs> you know how people God walk with us, you don't have to believe what he said. Amen. But we're going to get past that, amen? Amen. All right, let me, let's go over to Matthew 26, chapter. Matthew 26, chapter. After we get through doing this message, I'm going to let y'all put the title on it. <laughs> After we get through ministering, I'm going I'm to ask y'all, what should be the title of this message? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Call of faith, call of faith, call of faith. I don't know about you, call of faith. I don't know why you do that. As long as we've been doing this policy, you ought to be ready by now. How come you keep messing up? I, I love you anyway, Paul. It don't matter. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Are we in Matthew 26 yet? Amen. Let's look. Um, like I said, this will be simple but very powerful. Amen. I think that after we get through doing this message, I think some of you... Uh, may do some recommitting to the Lord or something. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, I believe that. Praise God. I believe that. I believe some of you who have not received him will want to receive him after this. All right, here we go. We're going to start at verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto what? Yeah. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and he went a little farther and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus said, what? You couldn't watch with me one hour? You couldn't watch with me one hour? I've read this scripture for 15 years, about 20 times a year. But today, I saw something different, different about this scripture. I'm going to bring out something totally different from what y'all think that I'm going to bring out of this passage right here. And I thought how awesome God is. God is so awesome. Amen. I was at the uh, prison last night in Anoka. And uh, it's amazing to me how many people they had in that room came to church. They, they called it church. They came. And it was about twice as many of them as it is us. And they came in and I asked them one question. I say, all of y'all in jail for one specific reason. Every last one of you in jail for one specific reason. And I said, I'm asked a question, and I bet can't nobody in here answer this question. And they were sitting there, and they was waiting. And I said, how many of you have a purpose for your life? How many of you have set a goal for your life? How many of you want to do something with yourself two or three years from now? Ask me how many hands I had. Not one. Not one. Not one hand. And I shared with him when I went to jail, I went to jail too because I didn't have no purpose. Didn't know what I was going to do with myself or no goals or no plans down the road. Just day by day, whatever came my way, that was good enough. Don't y'all know God want us to get past that? Amen. Don't y'all know God want to do something with us? Amen. Don't you know that you are somebody in particular to God? Amen. I don't believe y'all know that. I don't believe that y'all know 
that God planned your birth. Amen. Did y'all hear what I said? Amen. I said God planned your birth. Amen. Your mother and father were just instruments that was being used. Amen. Are y'all listening to me, Polly? Your mother and father were just instruments, but God already had a plan for you before you got here. Amen. You say, how do you know that? I'm like, how can you say something like that? His word says it. Amen. If it word says it, I believe it. Amen. All right. Let's look. Let's look. I guarantee you a change in your life today if you'll just look and listen. I'm going to bring out some uh, points here, but first of all, I'm going to go back through this, and as I go back through it, we're going to bring out the points. Verse 36. <clears throat> then come up Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go yonder. Sit ye here while I go yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Question. If he told his disciples to sit ye here while I go yonder and pray. And then in the next verse he said, and he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Well, if he tells you to sit there, but then he tells three other ones, come on, go with me while I go pray, you got to think about it. You know what I'm saying, Sister Karen? He said, sit ye here. But yet it's still three of them, he said, I want y'all to come go with me. Mm -hmm. Was God being partial? No. He wasn't. Sister Karen said, mm-hmm. Yeah. He was being partial? Yeah. Why do you say he was being partial? Because to me, to have the other ones just sit there, then he took ones he could trust or ones he wanted to be with him, he went on with them. Yeah, but all 12 of them was his disciples. Yeah, but some maybe had grown beyond or were closer to him than the others. Maybe the, what he had taught them, some had more revelation than the others, so he could bring them with him because he could count them to pray or to hold oh, it no, 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 as we look a little further, you see, they went to sleep on it. I, I understand. <laughs> they went to sleep on it. Brother Floyd's got his hand up. You know, I would have kind of felt left out if it was me, Brother Miller, he said, sit me here, and then I'm going to be obedient and sit down and he tell you and, and Dwayne and, what's your name? Meredith. Go tell you and Dwayne and Meredith, well, you come on, go with me. I, I kind of felt left out. I don't think I appreciated that. But Florida? I don't think that God was being partial. I just believe that God had a plan for him. You don't think he'd been partial? You didn't think he had a plan for him? Still in all, if he had a plan, I wouldn't want to be left Amen. to sit. Why? He telling these others to come go with him. Amen. Now y'all listen to me. Amen. I told you this is going to be life changing. Here we go. Life changing. See, you can't, you can't skip over nothing in the Bible. Well, you got to pay attention to every word. Somebody say every word. Every word. Look at the person next to you and say, pay attention to every word. Pay attention to every word. Verse 37. And he took with him. And he took with him. And he took with him. Write down point number one. Don't settle for the norm. N-O-R-M. Don't settle for the norm. Don't settle for the norm. Don't settle for the norm. It's too many normal Christians. They just settle for, oh, I'll come to church on Sunday. Oh, I want to hear Pastor Nate that preach. He preached so good. And then we don't see you no more the next Sunday. Amen. You what you call a normal Christian. Amen. <laughs> Wait, didn't nobody bring no stones, right? Don't leave the stones in your purses, in your pockets, or whatever. <laughs> Listen to what's being said here. I would not have wanted to be the person, Eric, that he said, you sit here, but I want you three to come go with me. I want to be in that three. Amen. Are y'all listening? Amen. I want to be in that three. Oh, yeah. Don't just settle for the norm. Well, what's going to make you different from the norm? We'll look. We'll look. We'll see what makes you different from the norm. Oh, brother, I promise you I'm going to show you. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Point number two. 
Don't settle for the norm is point number one. Don't settle for being normal. Aren't you tired of being normal? Aren't you tired of being the person that's always sit there? So meek and so lonely. Uh-uh. And I guarantee you when the devil attack you, you will be low. Amen. Amen. Man, we got to get tired of being normal. Amen. Get tired of doing the same old, same old. You know what? You know what? If, what, what a baby at? What a baby? What a little bit of baby I saw? The little baby back there. I'll tell you this. If we were sitting in a church building, we're not going to be in this one a year from now. Amen. But if we were sitting in a church building and that baby that's sucking that bottle back there is that same size next year, we got a problem. Amen. Amen. We got a problem. Something. It's a malfunction somewhere. There's something physically wrong with that baby, Dwayne, and that baby don't grow from that size one year from now. then you've got to think about the Christian also. Amen. That's been born again for a year or six months or so and still the same size. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't y'all be quiet on me now. Amen. Right. Hey, if you are not growing, if something is not changing, it's a malfunction somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. If your mama feeds you while you're a baby, you're going to grow. Amen. If I feed you while you're here, you ought to grow. Amen. Oh, y'all getting fed. Amen. Then don't settle for the norm. Amen. Don't just settle for being uh, some passive Christian, so passive all the time. Won't talk back to the devil, won't put him under your feet. Well, he been whooping you with the same thing all your life. Amen. Oh, man, y'all are not quiet on Maybe I shouldn't go no further than point number one then. No, brother, come on. Don't you get tired of him doing the same old thing, Sister Robbie, tripping you up with the same thing. No new tricks. Same thing. Amen. 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 The devil ain't got no, the Bible said ain't nothing new on the sun. Amen. <laughs> Everything he used it on you, Paul Leader, he used it on the person that was before you. Amen. Amen. Nothing new. Amen. What this, Ricky, what this thing, what distinguishes the difference between the three that he said, you come on go with me, and the other nine that he left sit down there? I told him to go sit down. Mm. Point number two. <laughs> that is cold. Now this point number two. Amen. Don't be left behind. Don't be left behind. When Jesus said, come on, go with me, I'm going to run. I'm going to get up. Amen. <laughs> Don't leave me. I ain't going to be left sitting behind. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Well, what's going to make the difference between you being left behind and you growing with the three that went with him? How many of y'all want to go with Jesus? Amen. Amen. I want to go with Jesus. I'm not talking about when you come back in the cloud. I'm talking about right now. Amen. Yeah. Do you want to go with me right now? Yeah. Yeah. Not in the same place, all your cotton picking life. Amen. Somebody see you now. And you say, oh, I got born again. I have see Jesus Christ. And then two months from now, they see you. Well, how are you doing? Oh, I'm depressed. <laughs> I'm sick. The devil. Just beat the uh, people one named Leroy. That's just like a name for a fully hung Leroy. <laughs> Leroy. Leroy was big, man. Leroy was about, uh, he was almost on the middle side. And, uh, how old was Leroy? We was in the seventh grade. Leroy was big. He come from the country. A place called Dixie. All of them, he had four brothers and they all was big. And Leroy was a bullet. And every day my brother would be talking bad to Leroy, my brother about this tall, and I ain't about that tall, and Leroy bigger for the middle. <laughs> and my brother would be talking bad to us. Yo, you ain't gonna do that, my brother will get you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Leroy popped my brother upside the head and showed up, I lied it to him. <laughs> and he take me bigger than he was and hold me out and go, bip, bip. <laughs> I mean, I, every day that went on for a long time. So after a while, my mama says, don't you get tired of getting beat up? I said, yeah, but look how big he is. My mama said, get you an equalizer, boy. Amen. Get you something to even up the fight. Amen. So uh, this went on for about six months. And uh, Leroy is still popping my brother. And I'm still running into Leroy. And I looked around. I couldn't find nothing. So I ran in the house. Got this kid. Leroy's out of here with that skinner, and the skinner was going boing, boing, 
Pow! I was popping him upside the head. And then Leroy cried. Oh, I got him now. I mean, think of me when I was tearing him up with that skillet, boy. You know me and Leroy never had a fight from that day forward. This is the way y'all got to do the devil. Get your skillet. What's your skillet? There's your skillet right there. Get your skillet and hit him upside the head. Man, don't be left behind. Amen. Don't be caught up in the same old boat. Amen, man. What did say? What did, what did man say? Some of, some of us call ourselves eagles in the Lord, but some of us ain't nothing but parrots. Mm. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. We not flying like eagles, man. We like parrots. Repeat the same old. Is that what we're saying? That was Yes, we are talking. And when you gonna come out of that? When you gonna get tired? When you gonna get that skill at it? And then the kind of skill that Paul needed, you can't drop it. Fix your hand just right. So when he went over, I was meeting him the other way. Point. But I tell you what, it wasn't no more fighting after that. Amen. We gotta get tired of the same old, same old. Amen. Get tired, y'all. You know what I mean? You know what I mean by get tired? Sometimes you let a person just push you around. Like this boy, this boy named uh, well, uh, Demons or something his name was. And I used to mess with him all the time. Let me pop you one time, okay, Ralph? <laughs> he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be bothered nobody. I'd go up, boy, I'm going to your head, man. And one day I was messing with Demons and his mama had died. I didn't know his mama had died. Then I came up, boy, I said, shut up. Pow, hit me in my mouth. Man, guess what you know? You want me to wear this stuff that's sitting down. Oh. And you said, well, why is... Why do I feel the sister show ain't always prosper? Why they always got money? They try. They give. You say, well, why is Sister Bessa growing in the Lord? She just got saved. She committed. Amen. Amen. Her heart is fixed. Her mind is made up. Amen, sister? Amen. Glory to God. Don't be the one left behind. Amen. Charlene, Charlene, the same old thing that worked last year, not to work this year. Not even six months ago. Are y'all listening to me? Don't let the devil get you with the same old thing over and over. Amen. Amen. Don't you get tired of fighting with your wife or your children or your dog or whatever? Amen. You gotta realize it's the devil. Yeah. And yeah. His, his head. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here we go. Life changing message. I promise you. Won't be the same when you leave out of here. Amen. Verse 37. And he took with him Peter. And the two sons of Zebedee began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further. Somebody said he went a little further. He went a little further. You know what Jesus is calling for? People that are going a little further with him. Amen. You're not going to settle just for, Oh, I'm a, I'm a born again Christian. You want to go a little further. Do y'all know what I mean by going a little further? You press it. You press it, Sister Robbie. When the devil try to come attack you with oppression, you go and stick your head right in that word. That's Amen. what you call pressing. Yeah. You go get somewhere and you worship. That's what you call pressing. You go get somewhere and you put on you some good, sound Christian music that will minister to your mind. That's what you call pressing. That's how you go a little further. Right, Are you listening to me, Sister Robbie? That's when you get on the phone and say, Sister Roxanne, the devil is attacking my mind. Pray for me, sister. Yeah. That's how you go a little further. Yeah. Don't get in no pity party set up. Oh, God, I don't think Christian walk is too hard for me. I can't make it. Get out of that. Amen. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Amen. The devil going to kick you behind as long as you said up feeling sorry for yourself. Amen. Amen. If you feel like I'm talking to you, I am. Amen. And if I am talking to you, you need to do something about it. Amen. There are two people, two kinds of people in this world. There are people that's always the problem, and there are people that are problem solvers. Amen. Which one are you going to be? Amen. All the way you're going to be that is you're going to be the one that goes a little further. Amen. All the way you're going to be that is you're going to be the one that's in that three. Amen. The only way you're going to be that is you don't want to be the one left behind sitting down. Amen. What determines, what determines a victorious Christian and a defeated Christian? What's the difference? Tell me. What's the difference between a defeated Christian and a victorious Christian? A person will act on the word. A person
person that will act on the word. That's a good answer. The one that don't get whooped by the devil, that's a good answer. One who they know who are they in Christ. What, what else? That's a good one. What's the difference in a victorious Christian and a loser? First one who doesn't give up. One who doesn't give up? Yeah. No what that was some good answers, brother. I had another one. One who will pray for others, not only just think of himself, the victory that he well, has you to give to you. What are you saying? Why don't you ask them? You ask them how they doing. Oh, they got the woe is me story. The ones that are do something. The ones that are do something. The ones that are do something. They're the ones that be victorious. You can't come to God and sit down. You want you go to your job and sit down and see how long you're going to have it. Pray. Go sit down and see how long you're going to have it. The man will tell you, you know what? I made a mistake. You need to go. But there's some that are sitting in here that's going to hear it and it's going to go in one ear and out the other. Well, come well, on. Now. And you'll be able to tell the difference between the two in just a short while. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you will. We won't have to say, oh, did you hear the word? No, it'll show. Amen. It'll show. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. I got something to show you. Life changer. Amen. Make up your mind. Some of your mind not made up. Your mind ain't made up. Make up your mind that you want to go further. Amen. You can't do that if you ain't got a made up mind. That's right. Your mind can be changed so easy if it ain't made up. Amen. I don't know. I, I wonder, damn, do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Wait, give me, somebody give me a, give me a, somebody give me a ten dollar bill. Y'all ain't a bunch of broke Christians. <laughs> Give me a $10 bill, somebody. Oh, I got it. I got it right here. Thank you, sister. I'll give it back to you one day. <laughs> All right, come here. Come here. Uh, come here, Andre. Come here, bro. Come here. Now, you stand over there, Andre. You stand over, you stay over here, bro. You go over there. Don't move on. There you go. Now you want this to come? Would you like to put this in your pocket? You sure? Oh no, I'm not gonna give it to you now. You better earn it. You sure you want it? Okay. Now you stand over there. Come here, Tony. Now, I'm gonna give this money to Andre. If you can get past Tony to get that money, you can have it. Now, Tony, don't you let him get by you now. <laughs> don't you let us. Sister Rockette just lost that ten dollars. <laughs> Now, you gonna let him get by you? Okay. Now, bro, you, you move on over there, Andre. Move on over there. Get away so when he, he got some room to fight. <laughs> okay, now you go go get that $10? It's yours if you get past Tony. That's all you gotta do. You got your mind made up to go get it? Go get it. Are you sure? You got your mind made up? Go get it. Go get that money. Get past it. Push him over. Do whatever you gotta do. Get past it. Right over it. Come on, bro. You want to get it? I don't think you got a made up mind. Uh-uh, you're mad. Okay, that's all right. All right, thank you, little brother. Y'all go sit down. Thank you, sir. Just what I said, you didn't lose your money. Now, if he'd have had a made up mind, do y'all think he could have got that money? Did he look like his mind was made up? No. That's the way some of us are. We just like that we got our hands in our pocket and say we're gonna fight with the devil. Uh, no, yeah. no. You gotta make up your mind. You're gonna go a little further. Alright. Now Gary is a lot. How much you weigh, Gary? Uh 260. 260? All the way 180. Now, if somebody, brother Little stood up here with a hundred dollar bill and say, if you get past Gary, you can have his hundred dollars. Gary, I don't believe you can hold me, brother. I just don't believe that. My mind is made up. I would want that hundred dollars in my pocket. And Jerry, you would have a hell of a fight on your hands, brother. Cause I'm coming, and I still don't want to have my hand in my pocket. Oh yeah, made up mind. My mind is made up. I would want that hundred dollar bill. Brother, did you, did you want it to be a hundred dollars? Would that have made you do it a little harder? Okay. <laughs> he said no. All right. Listen, we gotta have a made up mind. 
Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Make up your mind. You want to be the one to go further. Yeah. Don't settle for the norm. Yeah. Do something with yourself. Yeah. Do something with yourself. But that's something very simple. There's something very simple that stops you from getting past the norm. I'll show it to you. Here we go. We're going to keep going right now. Point number four. Point number four. Point number four. Look at verse 39. And he went a little further. Somebody said he went a little further. He went a little further. He went a little further. Point number four. Be sure you move with Jesus when he moves. <laughs> I'm going to break it down so you can. Be sure you move with Jesus when he moves. Amen. If God is doing a certain thing in his little body, and he's touching people's lives, fam, if you see miracle after miracle happen, if you see people getting blessed financially, you wonder, well, how they get blessed like that? Find out so you can get in the move of God. Amen. Listen to me. Listen, Sister Roxanne, don't you got a testimony? Did God move for you miraculously? Your people were going to take your furniture. And you said, no, I'm the one that's going to the further. You've got to have faith. you got to have your mind made up, Brother Floyd. If you have your mind made up, then that would be if you're not able to skill it. Amen. Yeah, well, you listening? Are you your sister? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to make sure you're here. Listen, listen. Don't be the one that get hit upside the head with a skillet. You be the one that's hit it. But what's going to make you the one that got to get it? Man, you did time on Sister Miller, you got to be the time on If Brother Miller don't feel like coming to church today, I'll see you when I get back, honey. Amen. Are you listening to me? Y'all, I don't think y'all get the whole of this. Y'all don't realize the word is your life support. Amen. The word is your life support. What life? Your spiritual and physical life. Yeah. The word is it. Yeah. It's it. Amen. Amen. Well, I just if I could if I could write it on the wall, I'd write it on the wall. Get a hold of it. Amen. Amen. Make up your mind. You want to go a bit further. You want to move in the move of God. Amen. Are you with me? Pray that you with the brother because I'm finna move. I'm ready. Amen. Let's move. If y'all gonna move with me, we're gonna move together. Amen. Point number five. Watch this. This finna be a somebody don't stone me though. I love you, don't stone me. Amen. Verse 40. Well, let me read verse 39 and 40. And he went a little further, fell on his face, and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as I will. But as I will. But as I will. Verse 40, And he cometh unto his disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto them, What? Could he not watch with me one hour? On your own Could you heart. Uh -oh. Keep your eyes on your own heart. Keep your eyes on your own heart. You know what made the difference between him choosing that three and leaving the other nine? Their heart. Where's your heart? Uh oh. Where's your heart? Would you be one of the ones that you would say, "Come on, you you come on, go a little further with me"? Amen. Or would you be the one one of the ones he tells you to sit down? Uh -oh. Only he knows. Amen. He's looking at your heart. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. You know what he wants them to watch? What does he say? Watch and pray that you enter not into what? Temptation. What will cause you to be tempted? Where your heart is. After something that don't belong to you. After something belong to somebody else. Well. Ain't nobody saying I'm a brother Floyd. Amen. Okay, Brother Floyd, can you call it, huh? Amen. Praise God. He wants you to watch your own heart. Amen. That's what the same with Sister Rock said. Whether you were in the three or whether you were in the nine. Amen. What does the number three mean? 
And I said, who's going to be in the number three? And y'all raise your hand. And I said, who's going to be in the number nine? Nobody raised their hand. Well, that's something right here. This passage of the scripture that will cause you to be in the number nine. We don't want to be in the number nine. Yes? Isn't that something? That will cause you to be in the number nine. Now, Jesus, listen. I'm charging you today. The same as Jesus charged Peter. I'm charging you to keep your eyes on the Lord, press in, and follow Jesus with all your heart. Amen. Follow Jesus. What, you know what? Whenever you're in a fight all the time with the devil, you know what? You're doing something right. Amen. If the devil is standing attacking your body, he's trying to stop you from doing what God told you to do. Amen. All of that stuff to need you, you're going to do what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. That's what it is. But let's look. Let's look. Time is going. I've got to show you. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to read verse, look at verse 19 very carefully. This spake he signified by what death he should glorify. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. And who was he talking to? Peter. Who was talking to Peter? Jesus. Verse 20. Then Peter turning about. Jesus just got to charging him. Just got to telling him, do you love me, Peter? Feed my sheep. That's what Peter should have been concentrating on. How are you going to feed this sheep? Peter should have been saying, Lord, all you got to do is tell me and I'll do it. Amen. Well, let's look at Peter. Peter jumped out the tree into the night. Mm. Mm. Oh, Peter jumped out the tree into the night. Amen. Amen. I'll show you. <laughs> yes, he did. Look. Then Peter turned about, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved following. Who was the disciple that Jesus loved following? John. 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 Jesus hadn't said nothing to John. He was talking to Peter. He gave Peter a charge and said, follow me. Be my lamb. And look what Peter does. Peter turning about, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved, was also leaning on his bosom. On his breast, as someone said, Lord, which is he that betrayed me? Talking about John, just describing who it was that Peter was looking at. And then verse 21, Peter said him, Peter seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Uh -oh. <laughs> Lord, Jesus ain't said nothing to John. Why do you want to be concerned about John? Stay in his business. But what distinguishes us from the three of the nine? What distinguishes what category you in? Look at the next statement that Jesus said to him. Look at it. Look at it. Jesus answered now, said unto him, If I will that he carry till I come, what is that to you, Peter? What is that to you? That ain't your business. Keep your eyes on your own heart. Keep your own heart right. Don't worry about that man. I gave you a charge and you're looking at somebody else. Amen. How many of y'all sitting up in there looking at somebody else? Oh, that brother don't wear a right clothes. Oh, that sister's always there. Oh, that is. Get your eyes on your own heart. Amen. How are we going to go further instead of picking somebody else apart? Amen. Jesus just gave the man a charge. You know what Jesus did? Called him into the ministry. Look at this, y'all. Jesus called Peter into the ministry. Think, what am I doing? I'm feeding God's lamb, right? I'm feeding his sheep, right? Jesus just called him into the ministry. He's going to turn around. Well, Lord, what am I going around there? Uh-oh. What am I going around there? And Jesus said to me, don't worry about brother right there. You keep your eyes on yourself. Amen. You keep the beam out your own eye while you're trying to get the mold out of his eye. What this thing was if you're going to be in the three of the night? Where your heart is? Where your eyes are? Peter goes, instead of looking at what Jesus told him, he's going to turn around and look at y'all. Who y'all looking at in here? Who y'all looking at? Ricky. Ricky, I know you got your eyes on the Lord. I know you ain't looking at nobody else. Can all y'all say that? Who you been chopping up? Who you been chopping up? Who you been sitting on the phone gossiping with? Who is it that's in your conversation all the time that don't even live with you? Oh, that's half 
Yeah, he talked too cocky. I said, we should go to English school. Oh. <laughs> He's so uneducated, I tell you. Who is in your conversation all the time? Who are you looking back at? God telling you to go forth, go feed his sheep, follow me, he telling you. And you looking back at somebody else. Just talking about what they doing or what they not doing. Who are you looking at? Are you in the nine or are you in the three? After you see this, what combo are you in? If you looking back at somebody and put your mouth on somebody else, you in number nine. I'm telling you where you are. You in number nine. Like I said, if you feel like picking on you or talking directly to you, then it's for you. Amen. But the difference in who's going to be in number three or number nine is what you do with it. Amen. Come what on. are you going to do with it? Are you going to be a problem solver or are you going to be the problem? Uh-oh. Say it. Amen. Right. Say that. It's just a handful of us. We should, we should be like two peas in a pot. Amen. So close. I don't think y'all get the hold of this. We are the foundation. Somebody say foundation. Foundation. We are the foundation of word of life, Christian fellowship. This is the way first time here. And what's your name again? Who? Meredith. And what's your name? Keisha. This all the first time here. And what if they saw uh, Sister Carol up and me play the word? I know, Sister, you are way off. No, sit down somewhere. I'll take over. They don't want to come back to this kind of mess. But what if they see me picking up? Don't you look good? Isn't you beautiful? Wouldn't you like to hear me picking my wife up the way? You wouldn't want to hear me chopping up, right? Would you? Thank you. I was just going to say, you don't chop yours up, do you? <laughs> hey, hey, get your eyes on your own heart. Amen. Make sure your heart is in the right place. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. If you do that, Paulina, guess what? You're going to be in the three. Amen. You're going to be the one that says, come on, go a little further with me. Amen. That means you go a little further. Amen. I told you, it's simple. Amen. It's simple, huh? Amen. Really? Well, you know what makes it so simple? Put your heart in the right place and put your eyes in the right place. Amen. You know who's going to do it? You. I can't do it for you. Amen. Jesus ain't going to do it for you. You got to do it yourself. It's the decision you make. Just shut your mouth. Amen. Amen. Your decision, right, man? Amen. It's so easy to, for somebody to get the chop and stuff, and you sit there and listen long enough, then you'll take it on the same, too. Amen. Really? And you know, you know the person that's sitting there with you gossip and chopping, you know you ought to just shut your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. But you sit there and you listen. And then after a while, I'm calling you, you say, yeah, he is kind of contrary. It don't make no difference, but that's what that's the tool that the devil uses the same way he did to get you to look back instead of going and following Jesus. Amen. We must keep we must keep our eyes on the Lord. We must keep our eyes off of each other unless you go pray for him. Amen. But what determines if you're gonna pray for him or if you're gonna gossip, you go right into somebody else. Amen. Talk is running your mouth. Now you hear it. Father, I thank you now for your word, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that your word has called us to examine ourselves, to review our own lives, to see where our eyes are, see where our heart is. I thank you, Father God, that because we've seen, we want to do something about it. I thank you and I praise you, Father God, that even as we've heard, you'll obey what we heard. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you're in here today and you say, yeah, that was me, I've been talking, I've been running my mouth. I took my eyes off the Lord and I put my eyes on somebody else. But let me tell you something. You need to repent and come out number nine. Amen. So you can move it to number three. Amen. Like Peter moved out of number three into number nine, you can move out of number nine into number three. Yeah. But it's a choice. you got to make it. It's a choice. If you say, I need prayer in there. I'm always talking. I, I, I just have a tendency to start talking, but I have nothing else to do. I start talking. And you're going to stay in the number nine if you're going to keep talking. But if you want to be delivered, if you want to be that person to say, no, I'm going to move out there. I'm going to move up. I'm not going to be left there. Hey, I'm going to move up. Raise your hand to this me. I want to move up. Pray for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hands. Eleven hands. Praise God. Praise God. You know what? You made the right decision. Don't stay in number nine. 
God, you know, God don't want you to be left behind. Yeah. He don't want that. He wants you to move in an area where you can put a guard on your mouth. Yeah. Ain't nothing sitting around sitting with each other being quiet, looking at one another. Message, you man. Amen. Praise God. I have another call for you. If you sit here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never received him as your Lord and Savior, but you want to. You say, man, I see y'all really serious about God. Y'all not playing no game. Y'all are serious. You right, we are. And you want to be a part of this. You want to say, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior too. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. See, God don't want you to perish either. But have everlasting life. In order to see that everlasting life, all you got to do is receive Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want to give my all in all to you. If that's you and you want to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord to say, raise your hand and say, that's me. I want Jesus to be my Lord. One, two, three, praise God, four, five, anybody else? Six. Thank you, Jesus. I see six hands. Hallelujah. I got one more call for you. I'm going to make it quick. This is a word teaching ministry. We stand on the word of God. We believe the Bible. We teach the Bible. We know that this is the only way you can defeat the devil. We know this is the only way you can walk victorious is by being taught the word of God. If you want to be a part of this word teaching ministry where we teach God's word so you can learn how to be a victorious, so you can learn how not to walk in the number nine, but to walk in the number three. If you want to be a part of this word teaching ministry, raise your hand and say, yes, that's me. I want to be a part of this church. One. Two. Thank you, Father, for the two hands. Hallelujah. Now I want you to repeat two prayers after me. First of all, I want you to repeat the first call that I gave. I'm going to give you a prayer, and I want you to repeat that with me. And then we'll repeat, repeat the prayer of salvation. Say, Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I realize, I realize I've been in the wrong number. I've been in, the wrong number. I've been in number nine. I've been in number nine. But, Father, but, Father, I make a quality commitment. I make a quality decision. I make a quality decision. That I'm a move. I don't want to be in the number nine. I don't want to be in the I don't want to look back. I don't want to follow you. I'm making a move, Father. Into number three. I want to be that person that you call to come go with you. Help me, Father, to keep my mouth shut. If I'm not speaking life. I'm not speaking life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to repeat this prayer of salvation. I want you to say, Father, Father in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, I realize I, realize I, have, a I have a need. That need is you. That need is you. Come into my heart. Right now. right now, make me a new creature, make me a new creature. In, Christ Jesus. in Christ Jesus. I believe, I believe. What, your word says. what your word says. Whosoever, Whosoever. shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. In Jesus' name, in Jesus I, receive name. My I receive my salvation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give the Lord a praise. God. Give the Lord a praise. We call one another, we just get to know one another, we love on each other, and we have that on Tuesday and Friday. There are going to be changes, though, in this ministry. There's going to be changes. Y'all just bear with us. Just bear with us. You're going to see changes gradually coming into the ministry because we came back with a fire. Amen. And we're going to set that fire on y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Make a quality commitment that comes to the Bible study. If, that, if, if, if the mother of that little baby back there don't feed that baby, that baby will die. Amen. The baby has to have physical food, and so do we. Amen. Well, when you get born again, you got to have spiritual food. Amen. If you don't get the word in you, you will die. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. All you that raise your hand and say, I'm listen to me. You need something to keep you alive. Amen. It's the word. The word yeah. keeps you alive. Amen. You can't live without it. We know that. That's why we're here every Sunday. Every Tuesday, every Friday, to get some words so we can keep on living victoriously. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. All right. Uh, don't forget the Thanksgiving dinner. We need more response than what we got. We don't Amen. have enough response. Amen. Amen. We need more people to tell us what they're bringing so we can be organized. When we come here for Thanksgiving dinner, we want to make sure we got some food. Amen. What, what time? The church is supplying the meat, but we don't want to just come eat meat. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we want dressing and all that stuff. Amen. Vegetables and all that. Amen. All right. I'll give you the time Tuesday for sure. Tuesday. All right. 
Come on, let's stand to our feet. We got five minutes to get out of here. <laughs> I gotta go look at a building tomorrow. And we're gonna try to buy it. I don't wanna rent it. Amen. If I can help it, we wanna try to buy it. Amen. Don't y'all stand there and say we just a handful of people. How are we gonna buy a building? I've seen it done already. Amen. Amen. All God is looking for an opportunity for you to give.